Hey guys, so I've had a lot of questions recently asking me how I document our homeschool and now that it's the end of the year I wanted to show you how I have documented this whole past year in hopes that it'll be a help for you. Um, I really love how everything turned out this year and love the whole setup and I'll definitely be um, replicating it again for next year which I cannot believe that I am already planning. It's just kind of nuts to think about that. <laughs> um, but if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that we are using a gentle feast as our core curriculum. So we are a Charlotte Mason family. Um, and I used Trello, which is an online resource for documenting everything throughout the school year. Uh, so every week I would set that up and I would use that as um, our checklist, as a way to check things off during the day um, for like swiping things off. And I also used it for journaling and for documenting throughout the school year. Um, now I'm not gonna show you um, what Trello looks like now. If you're interested in that, you can check out the other video. But what I do want to show you is how um, it works once you have done all of that. So in my Trello video, I mentioned that um, I create checklists and you get one um, like upgrade. So I use the print option, but I never actually print anything. I've printed something to show you, but what I do is I save it to a PDF. So I have a bunch of files that have documented everything. So throughout the school year, like you'll see here, this is our morning basket and it has a checklist of everything that we have done um, for that week. You can see you're able to create um, the days and you can see what days we've checked everything off. So just so happened that this week we checked everything off of our morning basket. For the feast for that week, as you can see this is week 25, um, there were a couple things that we missed. Like here we didn't get to solfa for the day or we missed a math lesson just because you know, life happens. <laughs> but what I love about this, as I mentioned in the Trello video, that I journal everything every week. So on my feast, um, where it allows you to put um, documentation or like uh, writing, I journaled. So you can see what I wrote uh, for that week. And it's just kind of like my little way of remembering how that year went. Um, and I have all of this saved in a PDF, so I just combined all of the um, all of the prints into one PDF for the school year. So I have one PDF of everything that we did, all everything checked off, every math lesson, every language arts lesson, every history, every natural history, every science, every um, Spanish and solfa, and uh, let's see what else did we do. Um, yeah, like our um, our like little flower folks and Burgess Animal Book and reading and copy work, all of that is documented now um, on there and I just love that. So that is how Trello ends up looking once you've saved it. So the PDFs look like this and it's just saved and it's just such a simple and really effective way to um, document your homeschool. Now, where we are at in Michigan, uh, we do not have any requirements for documenting for the state. So I do not know if this is something that um, will work for your state, but it's definitely something worth looking into. So now the other thing that I wanted to show you and to talk about was I created an end of year portfolio for my son. And I've had a lot of questions about narrations. Um, this here is all three terms of our end of term examinations. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sneak peek. This was just a cover that I made um, for this. And I recently got a ProClick binder. Love it, so simple. Um, and it was the most inexpensive one that I could find um, that seemed to have really good reviews. So, so far, so good on that. Um, so I created this um, portfolio and I didn't print out all of these because this would be a massive document. Like that's 36 weeks worth of work. This is a really beautiful snapshot of our three terms. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a closer look into that. So what I created here was um, just a spreadsheet of the exam questions that I wanted to ask my son. Um, basically, I broke it down into uh, Bible, Beauty Loop, The Feast, 
um, afternoon occupations, and then we do something called an end of term exhibition where we get in front of daddy and um, those are the things that we share with him and get really excited and just celebrate at the end of the year. I mean, there's singing and poetry recitation and uh, scripture memorization that's shared. So that is a beautiful time. And I'm hoping that someday I'll get to share us um, just a little glimpse into that for you. Um, but so I have this um, spreadsheet set up uh, where I list out all of my exam questions. Now, some of you have asked me, Shanda, like, I don't know what to ask my child. So here's my suggestion. Um, I know Charlotte Mason is a very um, open um, curriculum. You get to create your own curriculum. Even with a gentle feast, she does not give you all of the exam questions. That is something that you, as the parent, are, um, are to create. And the reason for exams isn't to try to stump or to trick your child, it's to celebrate what they have learned throughout the year. So when I'm going through, what I do is I look at all of the subjects that we have been uh, working on throughout that term. And I, and I try to pick some things that I know my child is interested in, something that he showed a lot of excitement for, and, um, and I pick something that he is able to now share with me what he has learned. So the questions aren't supposed to be to trip him up and, you know, to, you know, like multiple choice questions are like, um, A, James, B, David, you know, I'm not trying to trick him up with anything. I genuinely want to see what he knows. And sometimes when he's narrating, he's like, mommy, I don't remember. And I say, that's okay. Tell me what you do know. And so... Um, I'm just going to read to you just a few of the exam questions that I have come up with over the few terms just to kind of give you a flavor of the type of um, exam questions that I'm asking for my Form 1 student. Now these questions um, should um, have just a little bit of depth to them so that it kind of gives them a springboard, kind of something to go off of. And like I said, I'm not trying to trip him up. This is stuff that he has genuinely um, engaged with. And sometimes um, some of the stuff, you know, maybe he didn't fully connect with, but I still want to see what he knows from that. Um, you know, because some of the subjects, kids aren't going to love every subject that they do, right? <laughs> so um, there are some subjects that his narrations are gonna be a little bit shorter because it's not something that is hardwired into his nature to love currently, you know? Um, so anyways, so for, Let's see here. For our picture and composer study, I, I usually ask them, so we have um, six pictures that we'll look at from an artist. And so one of the things that I ask him is to just to describe for me his favorite painting. So this one was describe your favorite painting by Leonardo, Lar <laughs> can't talk, Leonardo da Vinci. And so he sat there and it was really kind of fun to watch because I was curious what he was going to say. And so he went into a whole description of someone. And uh, actually, let me see if I can find it and I'll read it to you. It's actually really cute because I was not expecting this of him. Um, oh, where is it? Okay, so I said, describe a painting that you liked by Leonardo da Vinci. And he said, the girl that was sitting on the mountain because of the background. I liked the background. It had trees, fog, and the landscape was pretty. There were roads down there and she had brown or blue eyes. Her skin was white. That was all he remembered, but it, I thought it was just a really cute description of what he remembered of that painting. And he was talking about Mona Lisa. I was like, I don't even remember the trees and the fog and the landscape and the roads that were down in the background. Like that was something that he noticed and was able to describe to me um, using his words. So I just thought that was a super sweet, uh, very simple way to just be able to say what he enjoyed about that. Um, the feast, uh, let's see here. So for history, I said, tell me the story of Columbus. And he went into a long narrative about Columbus. Um, Geography was a little bit more simple. Um, how can we use the sun to help us find direction? And so he then talked about, um, you know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and how moss will grow on the north side of a tree and that kind of stuff. And 
Um, but it doesn't all have to be orally. So one of the things that I did for geography was to draw a map of his room. And so I'll show this to you. Let's see. So we did everything on butcher paper to start out. And what I did was I ended up just cutting down the butcher paper and gluing it into here so that it opens up. But then on the butcher paper, he went and drew a map of his room with a key. I remember, guys, he was six years old. <laughs> Not the best artwork, but it was still awesome to see him do that. Um, so that's kind of what's fun about doing butcher paper on the um, table is that you can just kind of spread everything out and let, and visually your child sees all that he's learned then throughout the year. Um, some of the other ones that we did for term one, um, oh, so for natural history, I said, tell me about either the porcupine or the groundhog. So I chose two animals that he showed some interest in as we were reading through the Burgess animal book, and he then got to choose what he narrated. Um, I, I didn't pick an animal like the badger or something that he wasn't interested in. I picked two animals that we read about that term and went from there. Um, so that was just a couple of examples from there. Oh, and I always ask too, I usually pick from one of our read alouds, I'll just say, um, tell me your favorite scene from Red Sails to Capri, you know, or draw me a picture of one of your favorite scenes. Um, I'm gonna give you an example of just one of his very, very first narration. So actually this would probably be the first one that he did for, um, for a Charlotte Mason education that was actually documented. <laughs> he said, the beaver has a home made out of sticks and mud. He has a bed made of shredded wood and bark. He builds his dam in the middle so no water can get through from one side to the other. One side is dry and he has orange teeth to cut down trees. He cuts sticks and everything and he throws them on his pile with mud. And he has a shaped tail shaped like an oval that is a warning when he slaps it down. It is louder than a gun, almost. So that was just like his way I, the way I read it, it probably didn't sound like that coming out of his mouth, but those are his exact words. Um, sometimes I'll remove the bunch of ands <laughs> as I'm writing it down because you know how kids are, they'll say a sentence and then and, and then they'll say a sentence and, and they'll say a sentence. So I do remove the ands just to make it flow a little bit better. But like I said, when we use the butcher paper, I then cut it all out and pasted it into this book. So we have it all documented on um, those things. Um, I guess I'm just going to do a quick flip through. So these are a few of the things that he did throughout the year. So here he was drawing a tree. As you can see, I just kind of glued it so you can open it all up. Um, just another snippet of his narrations. And then I also put into this book, so we had um, a morning time um, binder that we used. Um, this was uh, his copy work um, examination um, that we had all of his um, like Bible verses and poetry and stuff. I've also included those here um, in there. These are the poems that we did for his recitation. Actually, one of them was a hymn for his recitation for that term. So all of the poetry, all of his recitation. And then it starts over for the next term. So I have the same format, same thing for each term. Um, I'll read a couple more exam questions just so you kind of get a feel for what some of the exam questions were. Um, I said, tell me the story of Jamestown. And then I gave him a couple names, John Smith, Pocahontas, that kind, uh, that kind of thing, just to kind of give him um, a springboard, something to jog his memory, something to um, just help him to go off of. Um, the other thing for history that term was tell me about the pilgrims and their travels. Now I added in the travels part because I wanted to make sure that he understood that he needed to tell their journey, not just who they were, but tell their journey because that's a part of who they were. Um, Geography, tell me about the water cycle. And then I have draw me different land formations that we've talked about. And um, then I had him label them, a bay, a peninsula, that kind of thing. Um, even for composer studies, I have, um, I asked him to describe the music by a particular, um, by a particular musician. 
Um, so that's just kind of a few more questions. Once again, we just have his narrations. And these are little cutouts that I did. We talked about moon phases a lot, so I had him draw the moon phases for me. And we also did a little unit study on um, volcanoes. And so he drew me what an explosive and a, an effusive volcano were. Um, this was his little uh, one for all of the bays and peninsulas and islands. And I. I prompted him, like, can you draw me an island? Can you draw me a bay? That kind of thing. Oh, also with our Spanish, um, I just did, um, I did flashcards, like visual flashcards for him with Spanish this year. And so I just documented the ones that he knows by sight. He can tell me the word and a word in Spanish just by seeing it. And then I have the one by sound, where if I said the word, he knew what I was talking about. So I have that. Um, and then once again, here is another um, copy work page. And then I have all of his um, scripture memorization and poetry and all that fun stuff. And then so for term three, I did things just slightly different. Um, I, instead of having him do everything on the table with butcher paper, I decided to type everything out because I was realizing his narrations are starting to get really long and it was really hard to keep up. I kept having to ask him to stop, which sometimes was good because it caused him to think what his next sentence was going to be. But I was finding that I didn't want to stop his creative flow with what was going on. So I decided to type because I was able to do things a whole lot faster that way. So um, we did things just a little bit different with the typing. Um, so here is another little snapshot of that. But what we did differently was I tried to focus on um, creating a little bit more quality art because I was finding that on the butcher paper, he was just really sloppy in how he was illustrating everything. So I pulled out the good art supplies. I pulled out real acrylic paints. So for the artist study for this term, I asked him to try to replicate his favorite drawing. So he chose the one that he liked the most, which was um, the woman boiling eggs by Velasquez. And I simply sketched out a very rough drawing um, in pencil, just kind of outlining. And then he went and filled in the detail with color. And I mean, for a seven year old boy who really has no interest in art, I was thrilled with this. I mean, he even has like low lights and um, he's got all the eggs in the pot and everything. And he's got low lights on the pot too. So I don't know, I was, I was just very proud of the work that he put into that. and. As you can see, his narrations are really starting to get super long, which is why I started typing them out. Um, and then this was his uh, nature study. He found a frog recently that he was just thrilled about and he wanted to tell me the story about how he caught it. And um, he wanted to draw a picture of it as well or paint a picture of it. Um, so I guess that's just kind of a good in-depth look at what we did for our school year and how I documented it. Um, here, I'm just going to kind of hold this up. So if you want to see the exam questions, go for it. <laughs> um, so that was it for the um, term three exams. Um, so like I said, I basically have this book that I've created for me to keep just kind of like a little keepsake that has a good snapshot of what he learned this year. And this is what he's telling me is what he learned this year. And then I have our day-to-day -day stuff um, saved um, in a PDF on my computer with all of my journal entries. So I love the way that all of this has turned out. I hope that this was helpful for you. And um, if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out.